Welcome to a new video about controller design. This is our example number six. In this example, I would like to discuss the lead controller design using the frequency response method as we did in the previous videos. So we will see the step-by-step -step calculations for this specific controller type and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following problem. We have the following feedback system. Lead controller in cascade with the plan. The plan transfer function is shown here. It is a second order system which has a pole at the origin at S0 and at SS-2. We would like to design the lead controller for this system plant such that the lead control system has a velocity error of 0.1 for a unit ramp input and the phase margin must be 60 degrees at least. So let's see what we can do. And the lead controller can be given by this transfer function which is the K lead times the S plus the Z lead over S plus the P lead. So we have three parameters. So we need to determine that. So let's look at the solutions. We start with the P control system first. That is our reference and see also why this P control system will not do the job for the specific design. So the controller is then just a gain. So that means the, K, the K1 is the controller in this case. Okay. Loop transfer function for this case, loop one, L1 is equal to K1 times the plant, which is the complete loop now, including the controller. P controller, then we have this expression. And for the velocity error, EV of 0.1, we require that the velocity error constant for unit ramp input must be then given by this expression. So we know that the velocity error is given by 1 over the KV, which is the velocity error constant for a unit ramp input. And when you want to calculate the velocity error constant, KV is 1 over the EV, just rewrite this expression you will get a constant which needs to be 10. But we know KV is also given by the limit of the S approaching zero for S times the loop transfer function here. And when you do down the calculations, you see that the S and the S will disappear. So they will divide it out and you will get K1 over two. That must be together 10. So K1 over two must be 10 at month means K1 is 20. So our controller gain must be 20 in order to get that velocity error specifications. But do we also have the phase margin of 60 degrees? Let's check that. So first we calculate the phase margin frequency, omega PM1 for this specific P control system. Now we first transform the L1 in terms of S to the J omega and that's shown here. And we already have the K1 so we just substitute the 20. Then we can say the absolute value of that loop transfer function must be one. And that is the condition for the uh, phase margin calculations. And we have now the absolute value of the loop transfer function here. That is now equated to one. And when you solve this, you get the omega of 4.25 radians per second. This is now our phase margin frequency, which we call the omega PM1. Now we now use this in order to calculate the phase margin for this P control system. We calculate for that the argument, which is the phase contribution of this P control system at that frequency, which is shown here. Now we have the minus 90 degrees and minus the arc tangent of the omega P M one over two. Why? Because the phase contribution of the numerator is zero. The phase contribution of this one in the denominator is minus 90 degrees. And this one is the minus arc tangent of the imaginary value divided by the real value. That's all shown here. And we have substituted for the omega, omega p and one. Now when you calculate that, you get now minus 155 degrees as the phase at that frequency for the speed control system. Now what is now the phase margin? The phase margin is defined as how much you're uh, away from the minus 180 degrees. So you can calculate now the distance between the minus 180 degrees and this phase that can be done using this formula, you can see that it's 25 degrees. But 25 degrees is way, way smaller than the required phase margin of 60 degrees. So we cannot provide this phase margin here. Of course, the velocity error was okay, but that doesn't change the gain margin. I mean, the phase margin. So phase margin is not uh, satisfied here. You can, of course, try to increase the or I mean decrease the gain such that you have a larger phase margin but then you will also increase the error, flex the error, so there are conflicting. So this is not the case. We cannot use the speed control system. So me one and the lead control system and now we calculate also the phase margin frequency for this case but if we know the phase margin in 
frequency will increase for the lead control system and also the phase of the total system will then decrease. So this is the consequence of using the lead control system. So to compensate this phase reduction, we add some extra phase margin to the required phase margin, what we require. So we add some extra, maybe 5 or 10 degrees, depending on the required uh, accuracy. So what we do is we add more phase in order to get that required minimum of 60 degrees phase margin. So we said let's add then 10 degrees, such that the lead control system has at least 60 degrees. So we will design for that. That means the lead control itself needs to provide them 45 degrees because we already have 25 degrees from the peak control system. That means we also need that gain of 20 from the peak control system. So that will be then seen shortly. So we need to provide now 45 degrees from the lead controller. So lead controller can be also given by this expression, which is formally used in literature. You see now two parameters instead of three parameters. You see the beta and the T, with capital letter T. And those are related now to the Z lead, which is the lead zero and lead pole, and also the gain actually here. And this part has also the part which must be included by the P control system gain. So we will see that shortly. This is just the lead control itself. So the parameters beta and T are related to the lead zero and lead pole. So we move on. Lead control will provide maximum phase, phi max, at the specific frequency we call omega max. The omega max doesn't mean that this is the maximum frequency, it is a specific frequency which will provide a maximum phase. So the curve is like this. So this is a curve for several values of the beta, beta 0 0.5 up to 0 0.1. You see that when the beta goes down, the phase contribution will go up. And it is happening at some specific frequency for the peaking. So this is the maximum for this case it is here so it's a little bit shifting to the right side so you will need to try to get that maximum value in order to get also the maximum phase contribution if that is required for your phase lead controller so that set the maximum value of the phase of the lead control to the required additional phase margin now in this case we need 45 degrees now for that you can now use the formula that leads now the beta which is related to the omega the phi max and this is this formula. It says the phi max is equal to arc sine of 1 minus the beta over 1 plus the beta. We know this. This must be 45 degrees. So in order to calculate beta, we can rewrite this expression. After a couple of steps, you get this expression. And when you now use this 45 degrees, which you require, you get 0 0.172. That's the beta. Okay. We get now the beta. Let's place it here. And continue now we need to calculate the magnitude of the lead controller at that specific frequency and that is given by this expression we don't know yet what this frequency is but if you now do the calculations and the steps i just skip here there will be just one over the square root of beta that means you get 2.41 but we need to compensate that because this is not what we wanted so make we need to make that one so the effect of the lead controller gain of 2.41 to the loop gain at that new frequency which must be also calculated must be reduced to one so that means the following our loop transfer function we already had which is from the peak control system must be at that new phase margin frequency one over 2.41 and what is that new phase margin frequency that's now calculated using this formula and that will give us the Omega P2, PM2 of 6.80 radians per second. We already said that in the beginning that the lead control will increase the phase margin frequency. And this is now the proof of it because with us 4.25, now it is 6.80. Okay, now we have now here the Omega Max, which is now also set to the Omega PM2, which is the new phase margin frequency. Note, the phase margin frequency has increased as said from the 4.25 radians per second to 6.80 radians per second. Now we calculate now the other parameter which is the capital letter T. That can be done using this formula. Omega max is 1 over the T times the square root of beta. We know beta, we know omega max so we can calculate the T and we have now here 0 0.355. We say, okay, what is the lead control zero? Lead control zero is looking at the location here, which is one over T, which is then 2.82. Now 
The other one is the looking here, P lead is 1 over beta t, which is then this calculation, which is then 16.4. Now taking the required gain of the K1, which is 20 for the P, uh, P control system, the velocity error will be then calculated using also the P control par. So we will take that into account. And a K lead is not just 1 over beta, but also times K1, which is then this calculation, and you'll get 116.3. So the lead control is now given by this expression. You see now this part here, the G lead is now equal to this expression, which is a 160.3, and then times S plus 2.82 over S plus 16.4. Okay. Now let's now look at the simulation results, specifically now for the frequency response. This is now the loop transfer function for the P control system. And we have now here for the gain of 20, you see the loop transfer function here again. And this is the part where you see the phase margin and the phase margin frequency, which is 25.2 as calculated also 4.25 as calculated. This is perfect. Let's go to the transfer response for the unit step response. This is the peak control system, close up system. Again, the gain of 20. This is the close up system transfer function T1, which is calculated using Mason's gain rule. So you see also here the overshoot, which is 48.5%, which is large. And we have also a couple of parameters here. Okay. The other one is the unit ramp response. This is important because we need to have a velocity of 0.1. So we apply a blue line, which is a unit ramp, which has a slope of 1. Again, the closed loop system, P control system. You see here the error, which is approximately, uh, now exactly actually, must say, 0.1 because it is 5 for the input ramp unit ramp and the result is the response is 4.9 so definitely 0.1 and for this specific case now we go to the frequency response of the lead control system because this is the lead controllers we have uh, discussed now loop transfer function first this is the lead transfer function l to loop transfer function and we have here the phase margin and also the phase margin frequency now that was 61.2 degrees, so it is sufficient, at least 60. So you see that extra 10 degrees was definitely the required uh, addition here. And the gain mar fame margin frequency was here 6.78. We had 6.80, so it is really close to what we have calculated. So we're all verified. Now the step response, unit step response for the lead control system. You see now the overshoot has decreased from 45% approximately to almost 10% here, which is a very good uh, improvement. And this is the closed loop transfer function formula, again using Mason's gain rule. And these are the values here, and you can also see that it is really uh, much faster than the peak control system in terms of the peak time, rise time, and settling time. Okay, also the unit ramp response for this lead control system. Now it is also T2. You see the blue line is again our ramp input. And the output here is the orange line. You see the 2 for the input and 1.9 for the output. That means, again, the error of 0 0.1. And again, it is according to the specifications. Let's also compare the results because that's also important because we want to have the results together. The orange line is for the L2, which is the loop gain with the lead controller. And the blue line is for the loop transfer function with the P controller. You see it has shifted up. That is the consequence of the lead controller. Also the phase is much, much higher. And also it is also in the phase margin frequency the free is also shifted to the right. So this is all here. And the result are shown here. And in summary, you see the phase margin has increased a lot for the lead control system as we require. So this is the design we wanted. Also look at the unit step response, that's also important. You see also how this system is really speeding up. This is the peak control system with a gain of 20. You see the rise time, now the rise time goes down, the overshoot goes down, the peak time goes down, and also the setting time goes down a lot. The steady state values are still one, so that means the position error are zero because the system has, the plant has a pole at the origin. So this is definitely always the case. But the orange line is much, much better than the blue line for the peak control system. The orange line is the lead control system and the blue line is the peak control system. Now, together we can say this over is definitely much, much better for the lead control system and also the setting time is much, much better. So it has speed up and also reduced the overshoot. So this system is 
really what we wanted and the complete design is actually now the design is actually now completed all right this is our example about the lead control design using the frequency response method if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video take care